Matthew 6.9 Mateo 6 Sham This then is how you should pray. Nagturo ang Panginoong Hesus kung paano ang marapat, mainam, at mabuting panalangin. The Jesus Prayer Panginoon, turuan niyo po kami na manalangin. Palawakin niyo po po ang pag-unawa namin sa napakahalagang gawain na ito na yung mga anak. At kayo po ang mangusap, magtuwid, magpaliwanag. Dalangin namin ang lahat ng itong may kalakit na pasalamat sa ngalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. The Jesus Prayer Matthew 6, to 6 And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Pagkardo na nanalangin ka na maraming nakakakita, maraming nababanalan, pumupuri sa'yo, you have received your reward in full already. Ibig sabihin, being seen and praised by others, yun na lang ang reward mo. Wala ka ng ibang pwedeng asahan pa. But the Jesus prayer happens in certain, very emphatically isolated places. It is done alone, unseen by other people. Sabi ni Jesus, kung mananalangin ka, pumasok ka sa iyong silid or equivalent, ipinid ang pinto, yung walang audience, walang ibang makakarinig, walang ibang pagpapasikatan, at gagantim pala ang ka ng ama sa langit. Luke 5.16, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Hindi siya nagpupunta sa mga plaza, sa mga malalaking lugar ng maraming tao, kabaliktaran. Pumupunta ang Panginoong Jesus doon sa mga tinatawag na tahimik na mga lugar at doon siya nananalangin. Matthew 14.23 After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. So Jesus withdrew, not advanced to the crowds, to a lonely, quiet, not a noisy place, by himself, not with a crowd, not even with a prayer partner. Mark 1.35 Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Paulit-ulit. Ang mga ipinakikitang halimbawa ng pananalangin mismo ng Panginoon sa isang tahimik na lugar, may mga specific places, either on mountain tops or on mountain sides, walang audience. Mark 14, 32-23 Doon sa ultimate prayer ng Panginoon sa Gethsemane, they went to a place called Gethsemane and Jesus said to His disciples, Sit here, while I pray. Iniwan niya ang marami sa isang lugar. Maupo kayo dito, mananalangin ako sa bandaron. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. So only Peter, James, and John were taken further. The others were left behind. In Mark 14, 34-35, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. The prayers of Jesus were very, very emotional. They were not coming from just a neutral thinking brain, from a feeling heart. So my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, with emotion, to the point of death. He said to them, stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed. So maging si Peter, James, and John were still left behind in point number two. And Jesus proceeded to point number three, where again he was alone. And he prayed with all his heart. Matthew 6.6 6, Then your father 
It's a repetition of what you already read. Who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So the Jesus prayer is secret. Private. Not public. Because prayer done in public is free from distraction. Mga abala. And from outsider control. Ano yung mga abala at mga outsider control? Pag nagpray ka, apart from yourself, with one or more people, there is an agenda already. So yung prayer halimbawa, o magpe-pray tayo para sa ating fund, magpe-pray tayo para sa ating building, magpe-pray tayo para lumabas ang ganitong kandidato, para ihalal natin si ganun at ganun. Nagkakaroon ng agenda yung prayer, which is not necessarily your personal agenda, but a group always agrees to an agenda. Therefore, it is a controlling environment. And many prayer events, especially lately, are actually political events disguising as prayer events. Many prayer events organized by religions are just a show of force. Kung gano'n sila karami para sila magkaroon ng political voice. Kung minsan ito endorsement lang pala ng isang politiko, ano kung sino man, kunwari prayer meeting o prayer rally. At marami pag kami mga prayer events, may script, lalo pag very organized, mga pa-impressed events. May sampung magpe-pray, bibigyan kayo ng assignment, ito ay magpe-pray mo, hatig to two minutes, magpe-pray ka about the nation, ikaw magpe-pray ka about the bagyo, ikaw magpe-pray ka about the nation. Scripted lahat. Controlled. At ang prayer, syempre, kung social yung mga tao, English, para bang ang Diyos ay nakikilig sa English kesa more than sa kung ano mang mga salita ng tao. And most prayer will become sectarian. Nagkakaroon siya ng religious color, nagkakaroon siya ng sectarian, and even a political color. So, ayaw ni Jesus na mga ganyan. Pagka merong mga tao, may expectation na. Kaya nga kung minsan, dumating ang isang very special pastor, hindi naman siya naka-assign mag-lead ng prayer, meeting agad ang mga organizer, nandiyan si VIP pastor, pag natin para makaakyat naman siya na entablado. Diba? So, kanyo, tatlo na yung opening prayer. Tatlo na yung closing prayer. Paulit-ulit na lang, kanya-kanya na mga repetition of the same prayer kasi nagiging showbiz ang prayer. Bigyan ng papel, pagdasalin. Uy, malaki ang donation ni ganong sister. pag natin. Yung pagpe-pray, nagiging para magbigay ng starring role. Hindi naman lagi. Pero madalas. So, magkakaroon ng oras. Sasabihin ng organizer, o iksian natin, ha? take to two minutes. Pero pag nakasampa na yung mga prayer leaders sa state, hawak na nila, Mike, wala nang bitawan yan, pahabaan na ng prayer. And the language, of course, is controlling. Dahil bakit kailangan nag-gather tayo mga Pilipino tapos kailangan laging English ba yung prayer? O kailangan ba laging Tagalog? Pwede namang Bicolano, pwede namang iba-ibang wika. Depende kung sino yung nakararami na umaten na higit na makauunawa. Which brings us to another point in prayer. Sino ba talaga kausap mo sa prayer? Ang Diyos o ang audience? Kaya, safer, more truthful yung personal private prayer. Kasi wala kang ini-impress. Prayer done alone is freed from performance. Because most of the time, public prayer can become a performance. May tamang boses. Oh, Panginoon namin Diyos! May mga mga diyang drama-drama. Kailangan naiiba yung tono, naiiba yung mga pitch, nagiging isang sinakulo. At sabi niya ni Jesus, pagka ganyan ang prayer, you already receive your reward in full. Gusto mo palang mag trip, gusto mo lamang magpasikat, gusto mong makilala, eh nakilala ka na, nakita ka na, yun na yung reward mo, uwi na. Wala ka na ibang aasahan. And very interesting, the Jesus prayer has an emphasis on place. God fills heaven and earth with His glory. God is everywhere. But the Jesus prayer, very interestingly, has particular spots in prayer places. Karamihan ay isolated, tinatawag pang lonely, marami ay sa bundok o sa gilid ng bundok. Meron kaya talagang kahulugan dito sa ating buhay ngayon. E kung itinuro ni Jesus, in-exemplify ni Jesus, marapat suriin. 
Were there really certain qualified places where prayer could be more effective? Very interestingly, all ancient peoples had their spiritual spots, specific spiritual spots. So in your own life, you might want to find your most powerful and effective prayer garden, even if that garden is just in a corner of your room. Pero dapat nating suriin yung pagpapahalaga ni Jesus sa tamang lugar ng prayer. Matthew 6, 7. Sabi niya, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. And the contemporary English version says, when you pray, don't talk on and on as people who don't know God. They think God likes to hear long prayers. And the answer is no, God does not like to hear long prayers. So the Jesus prayer, is it without words? Dapat surin. And heard by others. Non-verbal. Because words could limit. Sometimes your vocabulary is not so rich that you have to settle for a second or a third choice word which does not really express what is in your heart. So verbalizing a prayer could be limiting. Hindi naman lahat eloquent with a spoken word. Is the Jesus prayer really a thought which easily connects with the heart of God minus the necessity for transportation through words? Because puso sa puso, isip sa isip, without the necessity and need for words. The Jesus prayer is at most with minimal words, kung may words man. And are they the right words? Did the Jesus prayer contain the right letters? Because very interestingly, the words and the, the, the languages in the Bible, they, the letters had numerical values. So when you say a certain word, the letters of those words add up in a mathematical way to a certain configuration. And this is another area of interest to study. Is a powerful prayer using words, using the correct words, with the correct numerical equivalent. It is a very, very interesting study because any linguist that understands the original languages of the Bible and the many languages of ancient cultures know that the words in those languages, the letters, had numerical equivalents. So are powerful prayers actually mathematical configurations? Because mathematics is the language of the universe. It's going to be the eternal, powerful language because everything could be configured in mathematical formula. Interesting, ha? Pag-aralan nyo yan. Kasi bakit ang dami-dami nating prayer, kape pray natin, kung aaminin natin, parang ang konti naman ang effect, ang konti naman ang talab. Baka hindi tayo nagdadasal lang tama. Marapat pag-aralan. The Jesus Prayer, being private, is not affected. It doesn't have to be maarte. Therefore, no audience is best. Hindi mo kasi kailangang ipaliwanag do sa ibang tao doon yung kung ano yung pinagpipray mo. Siya na pala yung kausap mo, hindi na Diyos. The Jesus Prayer is not repetitious for credit. Hindi inuulit-ulit dahil may points kada ulit. Ngayon, pwede po bang ulitin? Eh, kung yun ang sinasabi ng puso mo, ulitin mo, eh di ulitin mo. Pero hindi mo inuulit dahil kada ulit may points. Magkaiba yung ganun. Matthew 6, 8, sa pagpapatuloy, sabi ng Nesus, Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. The Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So you don't have to tell God what you need. It will be redundant. The Jesus prayer is not all asking. It's not full of requests. It's not a shopping list. And probably 90% of prayer of people fall under this category. Shopping list, request, hingi, hingi, hingi. Sinabi na nga ni Jesus, alam na lang Diyos ang kailangan nyo. Since the Father knows, 
that Jesus' prayer does not need to inform God, does not need to explain to God, does not need to enumerate the needs. Yung bang, magpe-pray tayo, Diyos ko, nasa ospital po ngayon ang nanay ko, sabi ng Diyos, alam ko. May sakit po siya, alam ko. Kailangan po namin ng pampagamot, alam ko. Wala ka bang sasabihin, hindi ko na alam. Do not pray to inform God. Because God knows. Kaya natin sinasabi ang lahat ng yun, we are informing the other people in the prayer group. Kumisa nga, ginagamit pa yung prayer na sermon eh, para pagalitan yung iba. Diyos ko, pagalitan nyo po ang mga tao ang nakikayapid. Diyos ko, parusahan nyo po ang mga tao dito hindi nagtatides and offering. So yung prayer, ginawang patama sa iba. Another prostitution of prayer. A misuse of prayer. May gusto ka palang sabihin sa akin, sister, dinaan mo pa sa prayer meeting, ba't yun na lang muna ako dinerecho? Diba? Diyos ko, itas mo po ang mga kapatid dito, nagbigyan ako ng tigwa 1,000 kasi kailangan ko po ng 5,000. Parusahan niyo po ang hindi makikinig sa inyong kalooban. Maganyan mga drama ng mga prayer, di ba? Kaya tuloy, hindi popular ang prayer among many people. Eh, kasi, ang totoo, bihira yun na be-bless pag hindi tama ang prayer. Matthew 6, 7-8, When you pray, Don't talk on and on as people who don't know God. They think that God likes to hear long prayers. And of course, let's repeat it. The answer is no, God does like to hear long prayers. Don't be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask. We're only rendering this in another version for maximum appreciation. The Jesus prayer is not needlessly long. In fact, it is short. Baligtad ang madalas na nangyayari. Ang haba. Bakit ang haba? Sister, closing prayer na, nag-sermon number two ka pa? Closing prayer, hindi mo naiintindihan, nag-sermon ka na naman. At marami mga big instances, merong isang guest pastor to do a closing prayer, pero iba yung pastor na nagbigay ng message. The pastor who will close it in prayer cannot resist the temptation to deliver another message. So hahabaan na naman niya yun. The prayer should be short. Sister, ipag-pray niyo po ang pagkain natin para mabless. Diyos ko, pagpalain niyo po ang lahat ng nagugutom sa India, ang lahat po mga hindi ko makain sa baseko, at pagpalain niyo po ang mga bagyo, pigilan niyo po ang dating. Sister, prayer sa food. Bakit lahat ipinag-pray mo na naman? Wala ka na yata sa lugar. It should be short and to the point. Dapat naiintindihan natin yon. Misan yung iba, nag-evangelistic rally pa bago magsabing, oh, we may now eat. Lumamig na yung pagkain, napanis na ang spaghetti. Dahil nag-altar call pa si sister, na ang trabaho ay eh, i-bless yung food through prayer. Si Lazarus, nung siya ay namatay, pumunta si Jesus sa kanilang baryo, patay na si Lazarus. Yung magkapatid na babaeng kapatid ni Lazarus, sabi ko, dumating laki ng mga aga, hindi sana namatay si Lazarus, etc., etc. John 11, 38-42 Jesus once more deeply moved, again the emotion, the heart, came to the tomb of Lazarus. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. Patay na yung tao, so for you days, aalingasaw na yung bangkay, sabi ni Jesus, buksan ng libingan, alisin yung takip na bato. Hindi pa siya nagdarasala. Take the stone na agad. Or, nagdasal na siya without words. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Apat na araw na pong patay, aalingasaw na. Obviously, Martha had no expectation of something good. She had only complaints. And she had nothing in her mouth but the affirmation of death. Unknowingly, that was a prayer. When you don't expect something good, that is your prayer. Walang mangyayaring mabuti. Nawa, walang mangyayaring mabuti. Pag-complain ka ng complain, that is your prayer. 
Masakit ang ulo ko, masakit ang ulo ko. That is your prayer. Kaya lalong sumasakit. Patay na po. So yun ang sinasabi niya. Hindi niya alam the power of the spoken word. That the spoken word, whether you format it in prayer or not, is prayer. Your spirit is talking with heaven. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, belief is prayer? That if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So Jesus is saying, to believe is to see. And to believe is to pray, even without the words. To not believe is also to pray in the negative, even without the words. Because everything we do is a prayer. It's a constant dialogue between our spirit and God. So Jesus focuses on the answer to the unsaid prayer. Jesus already focuses on the already answered prayer. Kaya sabi niya, buksan. Kasi si Jesus nakafocus sa sinagot na ang prayer. Buhay na ang tao. Buksan na. Hindi na siya nagsabing tayo yung muko ay panalangin. Diyos ko, buhayin niyo po si Lazarus. Walang ganon. Sabi niya, buksan. Kasi sa puso niya, nangyari na yung prayer. Without words. Without an audience. Of course, the audience didn't know that the prayer already happened. So Martha was objecting. Pabaho na po. Kasi mabaho na. Bangkay, apat na araw ng patay. But Jesus did not mention, did not verbalize, and did not affirm, and therefore did not glorify death. Hindi sinabi ni Jesus na patay siya. Hindi rin sinabi ni Jesus na buhayin niyo siya. Kasi para sabihin mong buhayin, una, you've got to affirm na patay. Walang ganong reference. May mga example kasi of affirmation and non-affirmation. Halimbawa, tungkol sa kamatayan, hanapin niyo kung kahit kailan sinabi ni Jesus na patay. Luke 8, 49-55, Someone from the house of Jairus came, Your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. So, dead was verbalized. Dead was glorified. Death became the climate in the conversation. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just believe. She will be healed. Kita niyo kung gano'ng kapasitib yung approach ni Jesus? Niyo, huwag kang matakot sa sinasabi niya. Huwag kang paapekto sa takot. Takot will stop blessing from coming to you. Relax. Manalig ka. Gagaling. Alam niyo ang gumagaling? Yung buhay na may sakit. Sabi nung taong messenger from the house of Jairus, patay na. Sabi ni Jesus, gagaling. Jesus did not mention death. The messenger was mentioning death. So don't be negative. Believe. Sabi ni Jesus, she will be healed. So a positive disposition plus faith which is thought brings healing. What do we see here? Thought can affect matter. Lagi sinasabi ni Jesus, believe and it will happen. When you believe, when you think it, your thought will bend the material world and make it obey. Why? Because we were created in God's image. And when God speaks, what He says happens. Pag sinabi niyang, let there be light, nakakalight. Let there be this, nakakaganun. Pag sinabi ni Jesus, get up, bumabangon, maski patay. Eh, meron tayong wangis ng Diyos sa atin. Merong kapangyarihan ng ating salita. Kaya lang, ang careless natin gumamit ng salita. Ay, pesteng buhay ito. Ay, ang hirap ng buhay. Ay, wala akong pera. Kaya yun ang nangyayari sa'yo. Kasi ang lahat ng sinasabi ng bibig mo ay prayer. Naku, kahirap-hirap na buhay. Naku, ang asawa ko wala ng pag-asa. Naku, ang anak ko problema. O sige, ah, problema ba? O sige, problema. Kasi yun, ang umaalingaw-ngaw sa kalangitan, yun ang magbubumerang back to you. Kaya nagsasabing, dead, 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 and death talaga nangyayari sa buhay nila. And Jesus never mentioned such words. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Napansin nyo, ang daming tao sa bahay, nag-iiyakan na, tumutugtog na ang mga punebre, 
pangatugtog sa patay. Pero nung pumasok si Jesus sa bahay, hindi niya pinapasok ang kutakot-takot na taong sumusunod na usyoso. At pagpasok niya sa bahay, iniwan pa niya yung iba. Pagpasok niya doon sa silid na kinakalagyan nung batang, actually, patay na talaga. In other words, walang kokontra, walang nega na sasama kay Jesus. Kasi pag may kontra ng kontra, nababarahan ang blessing. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. So ano na yung mood ng mga tao? Negative. They were already wailing. There was already an affirmation of death. At sabi ni Jesus, stop wailing. Jesus said, she is not dead, but asleep. Very positive. Very present tense. Sabi niya, she is not dead, she is asleep. So hindi na patay yung bata when she, he spoke. Answered prayer na. Without the words. But with the faith. They laughed at him. Knowing that she was dead. So they were basing their behavior on what their mind knew. That the child was dead. So they laughed at Jesus when Jesus said, She is asleep. Death was on their minds. They could not accommodate the issue of life because they were preoccupied with the issue of death on their minds. Jesus was there. Jesus has raised many people from death. has actually healed so many people, done miraculous things. That's why Jairus fetched him. And the people in the house would not believe that. They'd rather stay in the issue of death rather than the hope of life. But he took the little child by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned and at once, she stood up. Walang gin glorifies the Lord na death, death, death. Sabi niya, rise from death. Walang ganon. Get up. And note, all positive. No mention of death. No affirmation of death. Kaya tayo, mga kapatid, in that spirit, pag kami sumasa kabilang buhay, we say, ay, gumraduate na si sister ganon. Gumraduate na si nanay ganyan. Gumraduate is death. The physical death is a graduation of the spirit. The dust returns to the ground it came from and the Spirit returns to God. So physical death is a graduation of the Spirit. And we don't dignify that by saying, ay, namatay na si, namatay na si ganun. Dahil sabi sa John 5.24, pag naniniwala ka kay Jesus, you are moved from death to life. You never die. So bakit laging namatay, namatay, namatay? Makikita niyo yung behavior ni Jesus when dealing with these issues. So back to Lazarus. Sabi ni Jesus, buksan. So they took away the stone. The people acted in faith. Jesus said, buksan at binuksan nila. They acted in faith. There's, a, there's this dialogue between heaven and earth, between God and the people who were there. Then Jesus took, looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. You see the prayer? It was already a thanksgiving, not a request. It was a verbal thanksgiving prayer. It was not the request. The prayer for return to life was done in secret. No performance, no expectation. I knew that you always hear me, sabi ni Jesus. But I said this prayer for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So in other words, the only verbal part of the prayer, yung sabi ni Jesus na, I thank you that you have heard me, is for instruction purposes. Para marinig talaga ng mga tao at nang manalig sila. Pero hindi niya ipinarinig yung panalangin mismo. The Jesus prayer believes it is answered already. Pag magpe-pray kayo mga kapatid, tapos hindi naman kayo naniniwala, huwag na lang kayo mag-pray, sayang yung oras nyo. Ngayon, kung naniniwala kayo, eh di magpasalamat na kayo. Yun na yung prayer. Hindi nyo na kailangan isa-isahin ang request because the Father knows what you need. Go straight to thanksgiving because you position yourself in the spot to receive what you ask for. No longer to ask for it because you already believed in it. There is no need to verbalize the request. Mark 11, 20-21, in the morning, they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. 
Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. The day before, Jesus was looking for fruits from this tree and there was none. And so the Lord said, may you never bear fruit again. The following day, pagdaan nila doon sa puno, luoy na. Sabi ni Peter, yun pong sinabihan yung puno na huwag na siyang mamunga pa eh, kahit kailan. Naluoy po. So you see the power of the spoken words? You see the power of the spoken word, which is really prayer? So sasabihin mo sa asawa mo, huwag ka nang babalik! Kaya nga, hindi bumabalik. Sige, magpagabi ka pa! Sasabihin mo pa doon sa mga anak mo. Mga negative na pinagsasasabi natin, natutupad. Sige, ubusin mo ng kabuhayan natin, itapon mo na. O, nauubos tuloy. Sinasabi mo eh. Naku, itong anak ko na ito, walang pag-asa ito, mahina ang icon ito. O, di ba tutupad? Because you're cursing. You're cursing your life, you're cursing the world, you're cursing your country. Do you expect blessings? Mark 11, 22-23, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. And for our purposes today, let's be literal. Although may mga metaphorical values yung sentences na yan, sabi niya, pagka nanalig ka, pati bundok mautusan mo, Jesus is actually telling us, Quite directly, that faith, thought, can bend the material world. Kaya yung mga pinagpaparing mo na gumaling, gumagaling, kung meron kang faith. Pero kung pray ka ng pray, pero wala ka namang faith, salita lang, boses lang, hindi tumatalab yun. Hebrews 11.6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Even if you had all the words to utter. Faith, belief, unspoken prayer, thought can affect the material world. Kaya si Jesus nakakapaglakad sa tubig, nakakapagparami ng konting pagkain, nakakabuhay ng patay, nakakapagpalakad ng lumpo. Because thought, which is unspoken prayer, premise on faith, can move mountains. For a while, let's stop thinking only of it as a metaphor and start considering its literal, practical implications. God said, let us make men in our image, in our likeness. There's a slice of God in humans. Unused. Misused. Kaya hindi natin nararamdaman yung kapangyarihan. So, to simplify, just think positive. Think wellness, not illness. Hindi puro illness. Pag nakikita kita ang mga tao, imbes sabihin, gano'ng kakalusog? Anong bibi mo ngayon? Diba? Ilang gamot ang iniinom mo? Ilang operasyon ka na? Diba? Hindi pag-usapan na, gano'ng kakalusog in spite of your age? Anong mga nagagawa mo pa? Hindi yung, oh, ano, ano na mga hindi mo na magagawa ngayon? Negative. Prayer lahat yon. At wala nakakaligtas sa tenga ng universe na didinig. Pag talbog doon, babalik sa'yo. So, ang lagi niyong usapan, high blood pressure, eh di nakaka-high blood pressure ka nga. Kasi yun ang pinag-uusapan. The power of the spoken word. Walang magic doon. Si Jesus ang nagsasabing totoo yun. Pag iniisip mo, nangyayari. So, ang bisang pag-usapan ay beauty, ang pinag-usapan ay ugliness, ang bisang pag-usapan ay yung mga katangian ng kapitbahay, katangian ni ganun, ni ganun, puro kapitasan ang pinag-uusapan, kaya nagkakadapeste-peste ang buhay. Verbalize, affirm the good, the beautiful, so that it is what will bounce back to you from heaven. How do you make people wither by cursing them? Cursing them in your thought. Cursing them. At kung isa ngayon, kinag-curse mo pa yung mahal mo sa buhay eh. Kadaldalan lang, kawalan ng katalinuhan kung ano-ano sinasabi ng bibig, tapos natutupad. Mark 11, 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. 
So pag sinabi ka ng sabi, ay wala na pag-asa ang Pilipinas, you are saying it, it is a prayer, and you believe in it, it is what happens. Can you imagine kung mga godly people, eh, sabay-sabay lang na magsasabi ng magagandang bagay tungkol sa ating bansa, eh di kaganda. Lalong gaganda. Pero pag sabay-sabay na puro kapintasan, puro mga kadiliman ang iyong iisipin, yun nga ang magaganap. So, led, guided, and tempered by the Spirit, believe that it's done and it will be done. Of course, yung paniniwala man ang nangyayari, dapat guided by the Spirit. Hindi naman yung fantastic na, ay, mamaya magkakunan ng 10 million dollars, mas magkataka ka, bakit wala? Eh, baka hindi naman talaga yun ang guided will of God for you. Fantasy mo lang. So, dapat sinasala natin kung ano yung fantasy at ano yung talagang alam mong in accordance with the will of God. And that Jesus would not object giving it to you because it will be good for you and for all the others. Iniisip natin yun. But in any case, do not focus on the asking. Because the Father knows what you need. Focus on the receiving. On having received. Past tense na nga. The asking validates and glorifies the need and the problem, thereby affirming and empowering it and attracting it. Pag sabi ka ng sabing, give me, give me, ang sinasabi mo actually, wala ako, wala ako. Ah, wala pala? Eh di wala. Kasi yung sinasabi mo, yun ang sagot din sa'yo. Wala ako, wala ako, wala ako. Ah, di wala. Diba? What you send out of the heavens is what bounces back to you. Like Peter, gazing at the wind and the waves. Nung una, naglalakad si Pedro sa ibabaw ng tubig. Pero nung ang tinitigan niya, yung mga hangin, yung mga tubig, yung mga alon, lumubog siya. Eh kasi, sabi niya, lulubog ako, lulubog ako, hindi eh, lumubog nga siya. Pero nung habang iniisip niya, makakalakad ako sa tubig, makakalakad ako sa tubig, naglalakad siya sa tubig. Kung anong iniisip mo, yun ang magaganap. Mahirap ang maintindihan yun. So, lumalakas yung bagyo, sabi niya, ayan na, lumalakas, ayan na, lulubog ako. Lumulubog nga siya. Until he remembered Jesus, naalala niya, ay, may Jesus nga pala, at tumawag siya, di iniahon siya. So, sino bang naalala natin? Yung paglubog o yung paglutang, yung kaligtasan o yung kapahamakan. Maging sa mga prayer ng marami mga church people, puro kasalanan ang laman ng utak kasalanan. Makasalanan po ako, di po ako karapat dapat. Marumi po ako. Ah, marumi, o di marumi ka. Makasalanan ka, eh di makasalanan ka. Kahit pray ka ng pray na makasalanan ka, araw-araw makasalanan ka pa rin. Kasi yun ang laman ng utak mo. Hindi mo ipagpray na salamat po at ako'y pinatawad nyo na. Salamat po at ako'y nililinis nyo patuloy. Salamat po at ako'y lagi nyo minamahal. Hindi, hindi po ako karapat dapat mahalin. Hindi po ako karapat dapat. O di huwag! Ayaw mo pala eh. Kaya yung mga maarting dasal ng mga kristyano na laging nililibak-libakan sarili, kinakawawa ang sarili, tinatapak-tapakan, akala nila humility yun. No! Pag snub yun sa pag-ibig ng Diyos na ibigay na sa'yo, tapos sabi ka pa sa'yo, hindi po ako karapat dapat, hindi po dapat lang po sa akin parusahan, dapat ako mahirapan, marumi po ako makasahan. Ah, sige, yan pala trip mo eh. Yun ang nagbabounce back sa heaven, yun ang babalik sa'yo. Kaya kahit dasal ka ng dasal, confess ka ng confess araw-araw, paulit-ulit ka pa rin. Eh kasi yun ang laman ng prayer mo. Focus on being forgiven, on being loved by God. At yun ang magaganap at magahari sa iyong buhay. Because thankfulness attracts blessings. Complaints attracts what is being complained against. Yun yung sinasabing talbog sa akin, balik sa iyo, dikit sa iyo. Kaya sinasabi mo, Diyos ko, napakahirap po ng buhay. Ako mahirap pala, o hindi mahirapan ka. O, practice tayo. Diba? O pagka, kunwari, kayo yung heaven, sasagot. Diba, sinabi ko, napakahirap pong kumita ng pera. Sagot kayo. Sagot, lakas. Eh di mahirapan ka. Yun ang sagot, diba? O ulit, ang hirap pong kumita ng pera. Nakakainis po ang nanay ko. Eh di mainis ka. Diba? Wala tayong magagawa. Ganyan talaga yan. Hindi oh, wala kang gawin. Di ba? Masakit ang ulo ko. Kita nyo, yun ang sagot. So, magtataka tayo mga prayer natin. Bakit parang hindi tumatalab? No, talab na talab. <laughs> hindi ka lang marunong mag-pray. O, oh, practice naman tayo. Diyos ko, salamat po at darating ang napakaraming kayamanan sa buhay ko. Eh di dumating. Di ba? Salamat po at ang aking negosyo ay magtatagumpay. Positive. Ganun ang pananalangin. Kasi yung sentence mo, yun ang sagot. 
May mahiwagang formula, hindi lang natin batid. Pero ganun ang effect. In the Jesus prayer, the believing and thanksgiving predates and affirms the answer, the solution, thereby materializing it. Oh, nanalangin ka, nagdasal ka, nananalig ka, nabukas. Diba? Aaraw. Kaya ang aga-aga palang nagkukula ka na. Kaya di pa sumisikat ang araw. Yun yun. Pumupuesto ka doon sa pinaniniwalaan mo ng sinagot. Hindi yung nanalig ka na paarawin yung pumukas dahil gusto ko magkula tapos tingin ka pa ng tingin sa weather. Umaraw na ba o hindi pa? Double-minded ka. A double-minded person will not receive anything from God. Sa kasaysayan nga, may nanalangin na huwag lumubog, na lumubog ang araw. Hindi nga lumubog eh. Pag ipinalangin nga ni Jesus na mangyari, yun nangyayari. Against natural law. Kasi natural law is inferior to the divine interventions from heaven. Which, when you believe, the mountain will obey you, defy gravity, and throw itself into the sea. Believing, being thankful, make it happen. Thought, faith, and gratitude brings blessings. Ingratitude brings curses. Pag ikaw lagi nagpapasalamat, nagpapasalamat, lalong dumadami yung ibinagpapasalamat mo. Pag reklamo ka ng reklamo ng reklamo, lalong nanganganak yung mga inireklamo mo. Complaining, disbelieving, doubting, thinking and verbalizing the negative, especially cursing, they are all prayers. Negative prayer. Sinasagot din agad. Jesus cursed the tree and it died. But we do not curse. Iwan natin kay Jesus yung department na yun. Alam niya yun. Hindi natin yun alam. Maa-abuse lang natin. In fact, sabi sa Numbers 22.12, you must not curse. Put a curse on those people because they are blessed. So paano kung nangka-curse ka ng isang blessed? E di talsik sa kanya, talbog sa kanya, dikit sa'yo. At sinasabi sa Numbers 22.38, I can't say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. So kailangan, galing sa Diyos, yung sasabihin mo. Hindi ka salita ng salita ng kahit ano na lang. Kasi, matutupad ang sinasabi mo. Mag-ingat sa pagsasalita. The Jesus prayer is a thanksgiving already. Kaya sinasabi, di ba, in everything give thanks, thank ka ng thank. Kasi tinatanggap mo na yun ang sagot. So Jesus asked the people to roll the stone, you position yourself, move like it's already done. Pinapabuksan na niya eh. Ibig sabihin, pumupuesto na siya sa lugar na gising na nga ang patay, kailangan na lang na palabasin. Act from genuine belief, not mechanical pasubo. Yung iba ay pinapasubo ang Diyos. At yun ang gustong gawin ni Satanas noon kay Jesus. Sabi niya, di ba ano ka ng Diyos? Sabi sa Bible ni, hindi kanya papayagang malaglag sa bato o magalusan ng mga bato. Sige nga, tumalon ka nga mula dyan sa tore, patungo doon sa bangin, at sigurado sasaluhin ka naman ng mga anghel. Yun yung pagpapasubo. Huwag niyo pinapasubo ang Diyos na Lord, kung talagang Diyos kayo, hindi na po ako mag-aaral, papasahin niyo na lang ako bukas sa aking exam. Pinapasubo mo ang Diyos. Sinabi ba niyang yun? So, tiyakin na ang ina-expect natin comes from genuine faith urged and given by the Spirit. Not because of your fantasy at hindi dahil pinapasubo mo ang Diyos. Yung iba nagpapasubo, anak, mag-demission work ako 100% full time. Tatay, meron po bang sweldo yan? Wala anak, living by faith tayo. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Ito yung enrollment mo, Diyos ang magbibigay. Pinapasubo mo ang Diyos. Kaya tuloy pag dumating yung enrollment, walang ibinibigay, nagagalit yung bata sa Diyos. Kasi, hindi naman sinabi ng Diyos sa'yo yun eh, pinapasubo mo lang siya. Alam niyo yung mga living by faith, living in faith na yan, usually, living in utang and hingi, ang ibig sabihin. Kailangan gumagana yung practical talent na binigay sa'yo ng Diyos para yung needs mo, ma-answer mo, hindi mo iaasa sa Diyos na magic. Hindi natin naintindihan yung mga pinagsasasabi natin kumisan. Kaya kung ano-ano nangyayari sa ating buhay. 
Pray for what you believe in. Very importantly, pray for what you can believe in. It is useless to pray for something that you do not believe in. Because according to your faith, it will be done to you. Not according to your words. Not according to your rituals. According to your faith. Which is really according to your thought. James 1, 6 to 8. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Wala kang mararating. Nagdududa ka pala eh. Kailan manalig ka? That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Alam niyo yung double-minded na yan? Siguro clinically, mas magandang himayin dahil patuloy na ngayon na napapatunayan ng siyensya na ang puso natin may sarili siyang isip. They made so many experiments na meron talagang heart and mind. That the correspondence of your heart and mind must agree. Your heart believes but sometimes your mind doubts kasi your mind decides is the premises its decisions on what is known to the mind. But in many occasions, it is only through the heart that one can see correctly. Despite what your thought, what your logic, what your education and experience tells you, there is such a thing as heart language that your heart speaks to you in spite of what the mind tells you. Kaya yun ang tinatawag yung matatanda natin na nagdadalawang loob. Hati ang loob. At sabi, pag hati ang loob mo, hindi agree yung mind mo sa heart mo, hindi agree yung heart mo sa mind mo, huwag kang umasa na may tatanggapin ka. Kasi ang gusto ng Diyos, unity, wholeness, oneness of your mind, your body, and your spirit. One half belief is one whole unbelief. Walang one half belief. Whole or nothing. So pray to thank God. Pray thanking, not asking God. Stop the asking. Pero sasabihin ng iba, di po ba sabi, ask and you shall receive? Yes. The Jesus prayer is believe. The Jesus prayer is ask. But at least, for what we understand from this point, ask very shortly, ask in the Spirit, and ask in secret, if you would ask. But there are many scholars that are examining the words of ask and it shall be given you and they are saying that some things must have been lost in translation because there's a qualifier to asking and receiving what you're asking for. But that's beyond our conversation right now. What is important is, okay, ask. But Jesus says, ask shortly, ask in secret, ask as the Spirit leads you, not as your personal agenda or the agenda of others lead you. But remember, believing is already asking. When you believe, you already prayed. Kaya thanksgiving na, yung i-verbalize mo. Verbal asking could be redundant, unnecessary. Then situate yourself in the correct, receiving, and grateful position. Balik kay Lazarus, for example, John 11, 43 to 44, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Yung babaeng anak ni Jairus, dalagitan na namatay, Jesus never mentioned death. And in John 11, 11, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. So yung babaeng bata, sinabi rin niya, sleeping lang siya. Pati kay Lazarus, nung may nagsabi sa kanya about Lazarus, nung pupunta na sila sa bahay ni Lazarus, sabi niya, nakatulog si Lazarus. Pupunta ako doon para siya gisingin. Hindi niya rin sinabing patay. Hindi niya inonor yung death eh. Because you know, in Jesus, there is no death. You move from life to life. So Jesus does not affirm death. Natin, huwag natin pag-usapan yan. Hindi ba banggitin ang salitang yan? It does not exist in the vocabulary of believers because Jesus has conquered death. There is no more death for His people. So sa kwento, the dead man came out. 
his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus didn't ask God to bring Lazarus back to life. Jesus believed. And Jesus immediately, directly thanked God publicly for the answer to prayer. Balik kay Jesus sa pagtuturo niya ng prayer, Matthew 11, 25 to 26. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Pinupuri kita, Ama, dahil ikinubli mo ang mga malalalim na bagay na ito sa mga panta, sa mga edukado, sa mga marurunong, pero ipinagkalog mo sa mga bata. The Jesus prayer is childlike. He takes the possession of a child, believing, expecting, grateful. It is the prayer that moves the hand of God. It is the prayer that bends natural law. It is the prayer that can make mountains lift themselves up and throw themselves into the sea. Yes, in the book of Acts, believers gathered and prayed in groups. May magsasabi, bakit po may mga group prayer sa Acts? Yes, but we were never told how they prayed. Hindi naman sinabi kung paano sila nagpe-pray. Magkakasama lang ba sila pero personal private prayer pa rin? O meron ba talaga nag-lead? Nasa blackboard yung mga ipagpe-pray natin? Meron ba talaga ganun? Okay, but do pray. Hindi naman pinagbabawal eh. Jesus did not teach nor practice group prayer. Jesus never organized any prayer rally. Politically motivated religious leaders do that. But Jesus never did a prayer rally, a show of force, a show of numbers. But the young church, without a tradition to follow, improvising along the way, they felt that being together could be direct community's response to fear because of the persecution or the community's expression of love to one another, so they group together in prayer. Hindi naman yun bawal, hindi naman sama. Maganda nga yun. But remember, to always be conscious of and be careful with what the group can do to your prayer. Avoid, minimize the disadvantages of crowd prayer that we have been studying all along. Yung me. Grandstanding, merong pastar, yung may paulit-ulit, yung ang haba-haba, yung ang kausap tao, hindi mga, ay ang Diyos, para ipinapaliwanag niya pala sa tao yung prayer niya, pero kunwari, nagpe-pray sa Diyos, alisin yung mga ganun. And group prayer can also be a blessing. Develop and practice powerful and empowering private personal prayer. I think that is what we like to emphasize. We are free to do group prayer. It could be very, disadvan very advantageous and a blessing to do group prayer. Why not? But most important of all, prioritize, never neglect your personal, private prayer. Kasi yun ang itinuro ni Jesus. Yun ang halimbawa na iniwan ni Jesus. Discipline your mind so that you can focus in your prayer. Find and have your best prayer place. Kung saan man yun, hanapin nyo. Sometimes, isang sulok pala yun sa loob ng inyong utak. Lugar din yun. Pero meron. Jesus always had the practice of choosing the best place where to pray. Process and harmonize all you learned about prayer. This is not the final word on prayer. Knowledge is dynamic. It keeps changing. It keeps improving because we should move from glory to glory unto the likeness of Jesus. So patuloy tayong kumisa na nakahamon. May dati na tayong pinaniniwalaan. Meron talagang mabaladagdag na bagong pagbasa, bagong pag-interpret. Idagdag ng idagdag because we keep learning. And we change from glory to glory. And Romans 12 to says, Be changed by the renewing of your mind. So process everything. This is not the final word, not a period. But add to your consciousness about prayer. Especially if you don't find your prayer to be very powerful. Baka may dapat baguhin sa paraan. Correct prayer could be gleaned from results. A tree will be known by its fruit. So yung correctness, the aptness, the preciseness, the power of your prayer 
could only be proven by the results. Ang prayers you by answered. Ang prayers ba natin can really move our lives and rearrange it. Keep praying. Keep learning how. Keep improving. Because prayer is the most powerful force in the universe. When you pray, you are in direct dialogue with God. And you open yourself to receive all the good things that God would like to give you. Pray more. Doesn't have to be longer. But give time for prayer. And give it your 100% best. Meaning, walang abala, walang distraction, kayo lang ng Diyos. Napakahalaga nun, huwag pababayaan. Lord, thank you for prayer. At nawala lupang lumalim ang lumawak, tumaas ang pagkaunawa namin para ang prayer ministry na ito para sa aming sarili at para sa aming kapwa ay lalo naming mapakinabangan ayon sa iyong magandang kalooban. Pagbulay-bulayan ang lahat ng ito, review your own personal style of prayer, learn from the example of the Jesus Prayer.